What's up, Sketchers? Good morning. Ah, uh, well, it is for me anyway. Doing this on an early Saturday morning. I couldn't wait to get this started. I don't know why, but I love customizing things. I love uh, restoring things. Uh, things that people either discard in the garbage or things that just, you know, are useless or, or disposed of or just disregarded. Uh, I... I guess that's my Christian nature, to try and restore things that are broken, or restore things that are, you know, discarded. Uh, one man's trash is another man's treasure, so to speak. So, I'm going to attempt, attempt, and hopefully succeed, um, in restoring this little guy here, or gal, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's it's a doll, so it's genderless. But um, I inherited this little doll, or rather, my daughter did, uh, from my mother, and uh, it's it's gone through some. Well, yeah, it's it's gone through some some hard times, I guess, because it's all mess, you know, messy. Uh, the the yarn hair, uh, the rear end looks like it crapped itself. So anyway. Here you go. This is this is the doll right here. It's just a little doll. Uh, looks like maybe a, a little carnival clown or something that's got the, the neat little you know, hat and it's got the, the yarn hair. But you can see here, the hair just comes right off. And uh, it's got all kinds of signs of wear, deterioration, um, the outfit all stained and then like I said it looks like it, it, it crapped itself so I don't know what that is I don't care <laughs> what that is but uh, we're going to try and restore or actually make this thing look better we're gonna try to make it better maybe even cuter I don't know it's pretty cute but <sighs> here we go okay so we got this we got this little doll taken apart uh, well, not taken apart, but I, I, I've taken its little outfit off. Here's the outfit, and like I said, it looks like it crapped itself. I mean, it's this outfit is horrible. Uh, but we might be able to save this. We might be able to. I'm not real sure. We're gonna try our best. Um, this little lace can probably be saved. It's not in too bad of shape. Um, either that, or we're just gonna completely. You know, discarded, but I mean, this, that's a shame, because I mean, this is, this is a really well-made lace. It looks almost like it's hand done, but maybe not. Um, the yarn hair, we're probably going to discard and probably get a new one. This little cap here is attached to the yarn hair, so uh, we're probably going to try something else. Um, here's the doll itself. The doll itself is a, it's a China ceramic. Um, like a like a ceramic doll, and uh, its its legs and feet are ceramic as well as its hands. Um, you can see they they put some padding in here for the ceramic. Um, probably gonna have to salvage the padding. I think the padding is okay. Um, it's been wrapped the wire. This is wrapped wire because it's bendable. You can see it's bendable. So it's got wrapped wire, and it looks like it's wrapped by. Um, uh, some some yarn, some really thin like sewing yarn, and uh, we're gonna clean up this head here, and probably give it a new face. Uh, we'll see. But there's there's what it looks like outside of the outfit. So we'll be right back. Okay, so using some uh, 150 fine grit sandpaper, I was able to I was able to um, get most of the. The nastiness off of the head there where the years of, of residue from the glue had held that little hat on uh, you can see I also sandpapered some of the uh, some of the face the little tear here and the cheeks uh, so the the paints coming off pretty nicely and and I said this before this was ceramic this is actually porcelain it's a porcelain doll so um, but there's as far as I know there's no markings on it I can't see any markings 
as to who made it or where it was made so this is kind of strange usually porcelain dolls have some kind of markings on them <clears throat> to find out where they were made at least um so after this is said and done i think this is going to be a doctor sketch original simply because it has no maker apparently uh this thing just appeared out of nowhere which is strange <laughs> No, it didn't appear out of nowhere. It was bought at a store, but uh, at least I'm I'm hoping. <laughs> but it's kind of strange that it has no markings uh, of a maker. You know, um, maybe they came off over time. I don't know. But uh, so here's the here's the uh, end result for that for the for the sandpaper. So we're gonna we're gonna see what we can do as far as using some maybe acetone. Um, and removing the paint from the face so we can start over with the brand new face uh, I think we're done with the hands and the feet uh, they look pretty good so we're gonna start we're gonna start with the head we're gonna do some like acetone some uh, fingernail polish remover uh, on this uh, if you and, and if that's a th if you have any figures that you want to like like Barbie dolls or ceramic dolls or uh, action figures or whatever that you want the face the the paint on the face removed you gotta be careful though because it will eat certain plastics um, it should be safe on on stuff like this but on ceramics and on um, porcelain but you want to be careful with plastics because it, it is a type of acid and it will eat the plastic so you gotta be careful uh, I know a lot of Barbie customizers use acetone to remove the, the paint job that they did on the Barbie so they can customize it and make it their own. Uh, a oak, which is what they call it. It's a one of a kind. That's what it is. O, 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 a, o, o, a, K, one of a kind. So that's what this is going to be after it's done. It's an oak, a one of a kind. So we'll come back after I, uh, I use the, the acetone to clean this thing up. Okay, so I'm going to guide you through some of the process. Um, first off, what we did, the sandpaper, this is what the 150 grit looks like. Uh, this was perfect for porcelain. Uh, it just, it gently took the, the paint off. So 150 grit, and then this is some um, acetone, some nail polish remover that I got from Dollar Tree. This is a Swan brand. Um, it doesn't matter what brand you get it doesn't matter it does matter the strength of the nail polish remover that you use I'm, I'm using this old paintbrush um, the reason why I'm using an old paintbrush and not a new one is because I don't want to tear up my new ones this stuff tends to eat things uh, you got to be real careful so um, this particular nail polish remover has uh, strengthening with vitamins E and panthenol for natural nails so it's pretty gentle you want to look for the stuff that's gentle um, now when it comes to industrial stuff um, you want to use that on like your metal parts um, you know heavy heavy materials um, but this stuff like porcelain and plastics you want to use uh, like you know the, mo the, the most gentle you can get so we're going to show you, we're going to guide you through the process here. I'm just going to dip this paintbrush in this nail polish remover. And you can see I've already done one eye. Let me see if I can get this closer. I've done one eye. You can see that. And then we're going to do another eye. So we're going to just take this nail polish remover and just paint over this eye several times. And you can see it's kind of getting goopy. That paint, that old paint that was on there is kind of getting goopy. So we're just going to gently just rub and see if this thing's going to come off. Um, now the problem you may have is if you use a brush, they tend to get gunky because of the paint that's coming off. This doesn't seem to be doing it because I, I apparently got too much paint on that brush. And that's a problem with using a paintbrush, is they tend to get kind of gooky. 
Um, let me see if I can clean off my brush real quick. Get some of this paint off, this old paint. Because whatever they used, it must have been like an oil base paint because it just, it's really sticky. So we're gonna dip this again and see if we can't, there we go, it's coming off better now. So that did the trick. Keep rubbing until we get this looking the way you want it to look. Now, the strange part is, <clears throat> I don't know what they used on these little, uh, these little markings here for the face, but these don't like to come off with nail polish remover, so I don't know exactly how I'm gonna get those off. We'll figure it out, but um, if I have to, what I'll do is I will use um, primer. I'll use some primer paint and prime over it, <clears throat> get it sanded down to the best I can until the surface is flat enough to where I can actually paint over it without it looking gunky. So we're gonna just kind of clean this up, get in that little nook right there. Um, that little piece of eye does not wanna come out. Occasionally you get that problem. <clears throat> Because they, they don't want to come out. Clean this brush off again. Let's see if I can get rid of these cheeks. Yeah, this is this is definitely like an oil-based paint that they used. And I'm not really trying to restore this doll to its original. I, I'm not a big fan of the Carnival Clown look. Um, and if it's going to be a carnival clown, it's not going to be that creepy 1920s style like this doll was. So, uh, and a lot of people are probably asking me, well, why are you doing that? Because that doll could have been worth something. And which I would reply, yeah, I don't care. Because most times, most times you have, uh, you have these antiques and People say they're worth this or that. You, you go places like the Antique Roadshow or, you know, places where you see a bunch of people standing in line waiting to get uh, people to tell them how much it's worth. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit. And they'll say, oh, well, you should have it insured for this or insured for that, you know, because this is worth such and such and so forth. And then, you know, they either end up holding on to it forever and it goes in another estate sale where they probably bought it the first time. Uh, and it goes to another person who's like near the age of, well, you, you know, I don't want to be insensitive to anybody, but uh, near that age of having their own estate sale, so to speak. So it ends up just kind of going through the circle of life. You know what I'm saying? So it's pointless to me. And the, the whole thing is most of these people can't even find buyers for their stuff. You know, they'll, they'll tell them these prices and then they, they can't find buyers for it. And they say, Oh, well, this is worth, you know, 250,000. And later on their family gets like five bucks for it. And that's where it ended up in the first place. That's, that's where they got it is they got it from a thrift store or they got it from, uh, a, you know, I don't know, uh, some Facebook marketplace or a yard sale. You know, you hear those stories all the time. People are like, oh, I got this from a yard sale, paid five bucks. Well, the reason why you probably bought it from a yard sale and paid five bucks is because the family knew how much it was worth, but they couldn't sell it because no one wanted to freaking buy it. So <laughs> it, you're, you're fortunate if you can find a buyer for these things, yeah, especially in today's market. But anyway, anyway, I got off on a tangent and I apologize, um, but we've tend to get, we've t uh, tend. We've, we've gotten most of this cleaned up. As you can see, the acetone did a pretty good job. It probably needs a heavier acetone. See, this is where this stuff comes in, uh, where you need a heavier acetone, heavier than, than like your Dollar Tree brand stuff. Um, they make a heavy acetone, like you can buy at Walmart for like, I don't know, three bucks, five bucks, and it will take this stuff off simply because it doesn't care if it's oil-based or not. It will just wipe it clean. Um, and on porcelain, I'll probably be safe to do so. So anyway, I'm going to get me some real acetone cleaner, and then I'm going to 
come right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, I didn't <clears throat> end up using any more acetone. Instead, I just did some rattle can primer. Um, I usually go to Ace for my primer because Ace has the rattle can that Ace has, has the wide area spray, uh, and they're cheaper. The, the off brand, the Ace brand, uh, is cheaper than the the regular, like your um, Rust-Oleum and stuff like that. Uh, it's it's cheaper and it's better paint, honestly. Uh, this is this is the primered head. This is what it looks like primed. Uh, you can tell it's still not completely dry. <clears throat> the uh, I just literally I just did it, so you tell there how I I kind of got a a little bit of a spill you know, overspray, as I call it. Uh, now you can see all the flaws in this thing. So if there's any flaws in this doll's face, you can see it. Uh, but she's all primed up. Um, now she just needs a good paint job. Or he, whichever the case may be. Also, I found out about this... Remember I said it looked like it crapped itself? Apparently, when I was looking up on uh, images on Google, they had these same dolls on swings you know they'd sit on a swing and they'd go back and forth like this but they just for decoration they just like sit on a swing so this is actually glue it's glue that they used it's it's color glue it's weird um so i soaked it in acetone hoping that maybe it would come off and it looks like it's trying to come off but uh yeah that's glue that's it didn't actually crap itself it's as glue it was attached to a little wood swing and they would dangle so yeah there's that uh well so i'm gonna paint this and uh we'll be right back okay so i've decided now that this is uh this is all primed up it's all primed up now what i'm what i did <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. What I did was I took, um, I took some Sculpey. Let me see if you can see that. I took some Sculpey, and I filled in that little crack that we have. So I, this is Sculpey, and I took it and I filled it in this little crack. And I, I like this so much that what I think I want to do is I, I'm gonna take some Sculpey that I've run through the the pasta maker here. And uh, I'm going to make some skin for this thing. And, you know, because they didn't have this. They didn't have this back when this was made. I think this was made probably um, maybe in the 1970s or 80s. And they didn't do the, they didn't do skin. So I'm going to take this, this uh, Super Sculpey that I've ran through the pasta maker here. And we're going to wrap this so this is what we're going to do we're going to wrap it and you can see it just looks like it kind of looks like skin um and this technique that i'm using i actually call this the skin press technique because that's what it that's what it feels like to me it literally feels skin what we're going to do is just kind of press this in there just gently just gently press it in there. Uh, you want to get out all the air bubbles that are in there. So just gently, let me see if I can get this better in the camera. So gently press. Um, you're going to have some wrinkles, so you just got to kind of have to smooth those wrinkles out. And you can see now <clears throat> it's coming along. It looks like skin over the face. And that way we can mold a better... Uh, we can mold a better uh, porcelain figure out of this thing. And, you know, you're going to get a few tears here and there, but that's okay. This this Super Sculpey is really great about being able to mold and add more. So we're just going to kind of tear that off. We've got, our, we've got our face. So we're just going to tear the rest off. Um... I'm just going to kind of press this in here just enough 
to where there's a little bit of a face. I'm going to take a, a gentle brush, take a gentle brush, and I'm going to press in the areas of the of the little doll, the creases. that are uh, that are prominent and when I get done here <clears throat> it's going to look like I've overlapped it in porcelain and it's just it's amazing look at that see that's the skin press technique using super Scopey. now I'm going to finish this because you can see it's got some lumps uh, I didn't do the rest here so I'm going to finish this and then we'll be right back. Okay. So I know I didn't, I said I wouldn't do the hands, but I, I had to do the hands. So I gave it some fingers. I gave it a thumb, some fingers and a thumb. Um, and yeah, here we go. Here's the face that I gave it. Let me see if I can get this thing in focus. Okay. There's the face. You, you can see it's a little rough. It's a little rough at the moment, but there's some ears. I gave it some ears. Um, ears. It looks like it's got some earwax in there. And I gave it some some plumpy cheeks and some lips and a chin and a nose and a couple of eyes that aren't finished yet. But uh, there we go. So once I smooth this out and sand it out, I think it will be really nice. But we'll uh, we'll keep getting at it. Okay, so I did a little <clears throat> I did a little tweaking to it. Uh, you can see that I kind of smoothened down the eyes. Um, what I did is I took another layer of skin, of uh, polymer clay skin, and, you know, ran it through the, the pasta maker here, and that's what it comes out as. And I uh, put it over my, uh, my sculpt, put it over my original sculpt, and you can see it turned out pretty good. Um, it looks pretty smooth. I went over it with some baby oil, uh, which I keep... I have this baby oil gel. You can see what it, the consistency of this stuff is amazing. Um, and you just take it a little bit and you just rub it on the on your creation. That way, it's soft enough to where you can kind of smooth in the details out. But uh, yeah, I, I like where this is going. So uh, we're gonna come back right after this. All right, folks. <clears throat> so I'm finished. I'm finished with this little doll. This is the this is the. Uh, the outcome here so you can see I, I colored her eyes I uh, gave her a little bit of um, lip gloss and a little smile on her face gave her some freckles uh, painted hair you know sculpted and painted hair on her sculpted a hat uh, and painted the hat so uh, this little dress of hers which you notice matches the the shoes perfectly which is hilarious because those are those ended up looking like patent leather shoes and little white pantyhose. Um, this, uh, the coat is actually an old sock that I used. Uh, it's an old sock. I just cut it and uh, cut some holes in the arms and pulled her arms through and then used my sewing kit to, uh, to sew this cute little long sweater for her. So it, I, I like the end result. It, it ended up looking really good. I didn't expect much from this, but honestly, this is a cute little doll. Uh, it really is. I'm I'm actually very pleased with the way it turned out. <clears throat> so there you have it. Uh, I also did some sculpt work on the hands, if you can tell. There's some sculpt work on the hands. Um, I sculpted the hands, but then I didn't like the way the hands looked, so I did the um, the skin technique. With the Sculpey, and I overlapped them with the with the Sculpey skin technique, and this is the way they turned out. I, you know, I, I'm not I'm not unhappy, not unhappy with the way it turned out. I think it looks pretty cute, so I can uh, put this on a little stand and maybe give it to somebody. Or, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out. But uh, yeah, it's it turned out really well. All right, well, hey. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you want all my latest videos, hit that notification bell. 
And don't forget to comment below. Uh, just any comment <clears throat> will do, you know.